Our nursery is located in the fellowship hall. It's available during the church services for infants uh, two years uh, and under. Uh, church doors will be locked 15 minutes after church starting. I know some of you came in the back. Uh, because we have all kinds of kids in here, we're going to be locking the back door from now on, and we're going to want you to walk to the front of the door. So please don't even try the back door, because somebody's going to try to come let you in. For security reasons, we kind of want to keep uh, that back door locked. Now, if you need to get out, you can go out that way if there's an emergency. But we're trying to funnel everybody in and out through the same door so that we can have the proper security protocols. Um, I know there's a lot of new people here. That's just what we're trying to do. Uh, we don't live in a, in, a, in a safe environment anymore. There's an attack upon Christians. Christians, there's an attack upon churches all around the nation. You've seen it in the last five or ten years. And so we really want to take the extra step of measure for security reasons, not just for you, but also for the children that are next door, uh, the most vulnerable targets that we have here. So uh, that's why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, we do have an extensive cleaning process that we go through. Uh, every single service, uh, after every single service, before every single service, there's uh, uh, the chemicals that are sprayed on everything that kill any chance of there being a bacteria. And so I'm thankful that uh, we have a safe environment. We have, we have air purifiers going on all around here just for your safety and our safety, just so you know. Uh, and I, I, I think what I've heard is that next week, or Monday, uh, the governor is going to allow churches to be at 50% occupancy, and who knows what's going to happen by uh, the time it comes to uh, Easter Sunday, but I just want to be one of the first ones to put this out here. I don't care what the governor says. Church is open, uh, and you can come as, as much as you want, and we can fit 300 people in this sanctuary for Easter Sunday, uh, and we're not going to be told by the government what we can or cannot do. And so... If you feel like you want to wear a mask, please wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, I'm going to assume that you have a medical condition, and I'm not going to ask you to put a mask on. And that's how we're going to get around that legal loophole. If people don't like that, well, that's too bad. Uh, the government's not going to tell us how to worship God. And guess what? Guess what? That's actually what we're going to talk about today. The priesthood of the believer and the autonomy of the local church. And so I don't say this flippantly. Uh, there's been a lot of time, energy, effort, prayer put into it. The fact that our church is still open when uh, there was a target on us to close us is a testimony to God's goodness and his grace. Uh, but you, you better mark it down with the, the, the legal laws that are going into place in Massachusetts and in America as we speak with our current president who he's trying to push through into these cabinet positions, you better believe that there's an all-out assault on Christianity in America. And if you don't see that, you really gotta, you gotta examine who he's trying to put into power. Uh, one of the big things that's going on right now and taking time to talk about it is that uh, our president, our current president, Joe Biden, uh, wants to put into place uh, transgenderism, meaning that if I want to hire somebody and someone comes to our church, uh, I have to hire them if they're transgender. Uh, he wants to pass that a part of the Equality Act. If you don't know about it, you should work, you should look at it. Uh, he's trying to sneak that in there, and that's a dangerous thing. That also means that if someone's transgender and they want to come to our bathroom uh, and go into our bathroom with one of our little kids, uh, it's okay, we have to let it. I'm going to let you know over my dead body that's not going to happen. Um, and so there's an all-out assault on, on the distinction between a man and a woman. There's an all-out assault on the biblical mandate for the family. There's an all-out assault on the biblical marriage. Uh, and you know what the front line of defense is? It's the word of God. So we're not going to fight them with bombs and fists and knives and guns, but we're going to fight them with the word of God because uh, God's word will not return void. And so there's a lot of things going on and there's a lot of chaos going on in the world and I'm thankful that we can be here in a church where things are calm and where we can hear and, and feel understand the Holy Spirit's trying to do something, we can come together and we can study the Word of God, we can look at the Word of God, and we can really grow with the Word of God. And so I'm thankful that you're here today. Uh